gifts. And others of you have the tradition of opening your gifts on Christmas morning. Our family has always observed Christmas Eve as the time for opening the gifts. And uh, year after year, for most of the last 17 years, we have not allowed any gifts to be unwrapped until the movie projector, the Super 8, was properly loaded with film and the light, the blinding light, was put on and then we had the delight of blinding in those days our little kids eyes with light as we watched them unwrap their gifts. They didn't always take to the, our penchant for making movies of the occasion, sometimes resisted it. You could tell by the pouting little corners of their lips as they looked at the camera that they weren't all that happy at certain times about being photographed. But now that our kids are teens, and now that maybe once a year or so we haul out the old family films, that's one of the highlights of our family life. It's fun to see the old movies, and each year you appreciate them more. Each year you gain perspective as you watch them and marvel at the changes that have taken place over the years and say, why, that used to be me. It's the same way with Christmas. The same story is told each year. But each time we see the story like our old home movies, we see something more. And our old home movies are treasured. They are linked to the past. Even so, in a greater way, how much more treasured is the story of Christmas by which we not only see him, but we continually see ourselves and the changes that have taken place in us. One of the beautiful movies of the coming of the Lord is that shot that is taken of Zechariah upon the birth of his son John, the forerunner. Zechariah gives a beautiful little phrase which for this Christmas time sums up to me a meaning for Christmas. It is his opening anthem of praise to the Lord where he says, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and redeemed his people. God has visited his people. There's a lot of meaning in that little word visit. In fact, there's more than one kind of visit. There is the visit of an official where they write to inspect. That's one meaning for the idea of visit. The health department visits a restaurant they are not there to sample the menu. They are there to see if the restaurant is operating by certain standards and procedures. The visit is one of an official inspection. An accrediting team visits a college. They are there not to pass the time of day or to be a connoisseur of courses like a student. They are there to look at faculty and curriculum and library and finances and purpose. And they are there to either give or withhold the stamp of approval upon the institution of higher education. A general goes out to visit a military base. He's not there to make a social call. He's there to see that there is a high standard of readiness in the troops. That's the idea, one of the ideas associated with the word visit. In fact, the very word that Luke uses for visit in Luke chapter 1, verse 68, is the same word which in another place in the New Testament is used for the word bishop. Strange in the English language, you'd never pick the two as being belonging together, would you? Visit and bishop. Yet they both come from the same root. It means to oversee, to officially look after. And this is God's coming into the human heart and into the human race. God is coming on a visit, a visit to inspect his planet, a visit which Jesus says will bring the truth out of men's hearts. He knows truly what is in our hearts. A visit that Simeon says will bring the fall and rising of many. He visits us this Christmas on an inspection tour of our hearts. The King of kings and Lord of lords comes to us in a non, the most non-threatening way possible, the manner of a baby. But yet in that coming, he asks us about our love for God, about our knowledge of God, and about our acceptance of the salvation he offers in Christ. A second kind of visit is a visit of mercy. 
a visit of mercy to the poor and to the needy. Jesus says in Matthew 25, 36, I was sick and you visited me. Here he is describing the action of his people toward the poor and the needy. James says that true religion is to visit the orphans and the widows. This Christmas season, I've had several occasions to be on visits of mercy, and there have been many, many visits of mercy to the poor and the needy that have gone forth from this congregation at this Christmas time. It has been marvelous to see. God has come on a visit of mercy to us. That's what Christmas is all about. We who are needy, he has come to visit and to give us something we never could have afforded. This past year, 1983, in the month of May, I had with Jewel the privilege of being in Guangdong province in mainland China for a day. It was a delightful day and our tour guide was a young Chinese lady about 28 or 29 years of age, spoke the English language with excellence. She knew it's the most difficult thing, of course, to know in a language is prepositions and also humor. And she had the, um, the American flavor of the English language so well down that she had all the idioms and the American humor with it. And I, I marveled at that because I knew, obviously, she had never been out of that small area where her home was. We uh, listened to her all day long and, and uh, developed a special kind of camaraderie with her because we were sitting in the seat right behind her. I always uh, like to get to the front where I have a chance to talk to people like that. And so we uh, had occasion to talk much during the day and thought to, to ourselves, oh, if, if uh, this girl could, uh, could only see more than Guangdong province. Why, China, I said to myself, hasn't changed since 1949. Everything's the same. People are still working on the roads by end, and the water buffalo are still uh, pl uh, plowing the rice fields, and everything is the same. Poor China, except a, maybe a tourist hotel. But here was the new China, this young, beautiful tour guide leader. As we came to the close of the tour that day, we neared the city of Macau. Macau is not is on mainland China, but it doesn't belong to the People's Republic of China. It's a Portuguese colony. It's been a Portuguese colony for over 400 years. And Macau, compared to Hong Kong, is kind of dumpy. A four-story skyline in contrast to the gleaming skyscrapers of Hong Kong. And uh, I'm watching the skyline of Macau looming a mile off in the horizon, and this beautiful tour guide leader has just pointed out her little home in a new two-story apartment home, which by Chinese standards was great, but by Hong Kong standards wasn't so great. And then she said, someday I hope to travel. And I thought to myself, oh, that's great. Maybe China is changing. And someday she'll be able not only to get to Hong Kong and see beautiful Hong Kong, but maybe someday she'll get to America and she'll see beautiful country of the United States. So I listened, where was she going to travel? She said, she had said, someday I hope to travel. And she says, I may even get to Macau. I thought, because there was such a glistening hope in her eye, Macau, Macau's a dump. You should see Hong Kong or USA, but Macau. And somehow all the imprisonment of that social situation struck out when her greatest life hope was to get to Macau. She had no idea of what lay beyond Macau, and I think her words let me know that probably none of us have any idea of what God has for us. Of the beauty of the home from which Christ came, of the glory of the heavenlies into which he assures us he is taking us, our best vision is only like Macau. We don't see it straight yet. But Jesus has come on a mission of mercy to the poor and needy, and you may say, you may be the wealthiest, per wealthiest person in this building and say, but I don't feel poor and needy. I'll tell you, when we compare the glory from which Christ came to the riches which we may have, oh, everyone in this room is poor and needy. Not a one of us has life eternal. Not a one of us has heaven, except it be given to us as a gift from God. And God has purposed to do exactly that in giving us Jesus. He has come to visit the poor and needy. That's why Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who recognize they need his gift. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. A third kind of visit is a visit, the visit of family and friends. The writer of Hebrews says, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you should visit him? Some of you are here this evening, family and friends, on a visit. 
And that's a delightful experience. It's so wonderful when we realize the Christmas story that Jesus has not only come on a visit of inspection and on a visit of mercy, but he's come on a visit that would bring us into the very family of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We have the opportunity because of Christmas of being called the sons and daughters of God. Emmanuel, God is with us. We are God's family. Visits come to an end, don't they? A visit may last for a Christmas time, but some of you may be from the Midwest and you're going to have to go back to that cold, cold, cold because visits come to an end. And we may live in California all of our life, but the visit of our life in California is coming to an end as well because all of life is simply a visit here. Jesus' visit, though, is different because his visit never ends. He himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Christmas is saying that God has come to stay. How beautiful is Christmas. God has visited his people. Has God visited you? Our Father, for the glory and the beauty of this Christmas, we give thanks. May you truly visit every heart. Some of us, Lord, when we realize that you are visiting us, may feel uncomfortable that you have come on a visit of inspection because it is as though we do not feel our heart is in order to be inspected. How wonderful, therefore, it is to know that you have also come on a visit of mercy, a visit of giving salvation and grace and love. How wonderful to know that through your visit we are brought into your family. I pray that every one of us here this evening will from our heart own you as our Lord and will open up our lives to receive the visit of your presence. It is when we do that, Lord, that Christmas becomes more than an historical event. Christmas becomes living in us. Jesus is born in our hearts. Thank you for this beautiful evening, Lord Jesus. Amen.